My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So that's why I started the Become Remarkable podcast to bring you entrepreneurs from all of well, entrepreneurs or not from all over the world to bring you stories, experiences, and inspiration. Today I have with me Mikhail Alphon. So please, Mikhail, explain to the world, explain to the audience, who are you? What do you believe in? What's your story? And what difference are you making in the world? Man, first of all, Adrian, thank you so much for having me on. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be here and to meet you.、Um, as Adrian mentioned, my name is Mikhail. I'm based out here in、uh, Orange County, California, and what I believe in is constantly、uh, inspiring other people to become the best versions of themselves. And I know that that sounds kind of cheesy, especially for Uh, especially for a podcast that's maybe based around something like that, but that's the whole point, and that's why I kind of agreed and supported exactly what you're doing here. But I love doing that through through social media platforms. I'm actually a digital marketer out here in、uh, California as well. I've、uh, owned agencies in the past. I'm actually working on a new one as well. But I truly believe that. That every single Instagram post that you put out there, your tweets, your Snapchats, your Facebook posts, your videos, your podcasts, whatever it is, it should inspire some sort of positivity or some sort of positive change,、uh, at least in your immediate network. And by doing that to one person, the goal is that you know it spreads like wildfire and goes viral, so to speak,、um, just giving that type of energy throughout the world. So hopefully. That's kind of what I've been focused on、um, and been very intentional、uh, about over the last, you know, year and a half or two years, or,、uh, two years or so. So, hopefully, that's a change that I'm making. I feel like、uh, over time, it's definitely developed a great community of people of、uh, people that I've known for a long time, and then new people I've met met through social media, like even now.、Um, you know, I'm hoping that that's the change that's、uh, that's going on. Yeah, with regards to change, I, the way I see it is reciprocity. Do、yeah. stuff and share with the world, and you get you get it back. You're going to say something? No, I I just completely agree with you. Yeah, cool. Now I'm just curious. Then you talk about、um, people being the best person they can be and inspiring your immediate network. One, how do you go about inspiring the immediate network? People who don't, well, people who know you personally, perhaps for years and years. But they haven't、mm. got the same context as you with regards to entrepreneurship, or marketing, or social social media, or things like that. Yeah, well, I think that I think that one of the ways to do that is to one spread a general message that can apply to everybody. So, you know, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is empathy, for example. And if I can put out content on those platforms about empathy and really taking、uh, taking a moment to look at life through other people's shoes before. Responding or reacting to certain situations,、um, I think that's something that can apply to everybody, regardless of whether or not they're in my industry. Hi, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't quite think of it that way, actually. Creating content with a pure emotional slant, the different different emotions that we have as humans, your empathy,、uh, fear, and pride, and so on and so forth, appealing straight to that. It's interesting. I didn't think of that. Didn't think of putting it that way before. I'm also just very curious about these agencies that you、uh, said you started. Could you,、mm -hmm. could you elaborate on those, please? Yeah, I started my first agency in.、Uh, I started my first agency in early 2014. It was a company called Seven Twelve Marketing, and that was actually based.、Uh, the name Seven Twelve came from the book of Matthew, which was actually "Do unto others as you would yourself."、Uh, digital marketing agency. We focus focused on content development, social media marketing, etc., etc. And I ran that for about three years.、Um, I recently exited the company because you know I just I felt like it was something that I outgrew, and、um, now I'm kind of on to the next thing. Yeah, of、cool. course. So, why? What are you working on next, and what are you doing? <laughs> well, right now I'm、uh, I'm just working with the same team, and we're you know we're expanding on that team, and really expanding our、uh, we're expanding kind of not just our reach, but really our scope of work, and then how we go about business as well. I mean, the our core belief is that we wanted to create an environment. Where we could be essentially just hanging out with our friends and、uh, be in a really enlightening and p 
positive environment while doing good work for our clients and producing results for them. So, you know, we're just essentially doing whatever it takes and being relentless on the, uh, about that mission. Yeah, cool. So what, with these marketing agencies, I don't know too much about them, but what do they do exactly? What's the, um, what's the day-to-day? What's the, what's the promise? What problem do they solve? Well, for a lot of our clients, uh, a lot of our clients, the biggest one is time, but also in the digital marketing space, it's always changing, especially with the battle between social platforms, right? Um, there's there's algorithm changes, there's changes to ad platforms and how people are actually consuming content. So what happens is one of our clients will approach us or hire us to really manage all of their digital marketing efforts anywhere from search engine optimization and SEM to social media marketing to email marketing and in some cases web development as well. But, you know, the companies that we're working with, they're small to medium sized businesses and they don't necessarily have the resources to do it internally or they're looking to change it up because they've been kind of stuck in old ways and doing some old, uh, you know, old marketing tactics. Yeah, it's a good way to leverage out and not have to deal with uh, deal with compliance and deal with laws. So hiring <laughs> right. people who work for themselves or, you know, just pay them and then they sort themselves out with regards to the compliance and laws. It's just invoice. They, they'll invoice yeah. you and that's it. Leave it at that. Exactly. It's really nice because they end up getting a whole marketing team for them, like any anywhere from six to 10 people, depending on the product or the project. And they're really paying what they would, you know, one or two employees. So it's nice. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a lot of leverage. Other people's time and just mm-hmm. it's just a end of a phone call or a Skype and sorted rather than in person, which is good and bad. Now, yeah. you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, changing algorithm change or things like that what change on what changes do you see on the horizon with regards to social media uh, there's a couple things actually one of them is voice so I, I think it's excellent that you're 35 episodes in um but voice is something that's really important because people now are wanting to consume content on their time kind of the same way that the same way that uh you know visio or not visio i'm sorry um What's the, yeah, I forgot what it was called, which is really crazy. I haven't had cable in a really long time. TiVo, that's what it is. Kind of like how TiVo changed anything. You're able to pause like a certain, you know, you're able to pause, record episodes and watch TV shows on your own time. Same thing with Netflix and all of these streaming platforms is there's episodes that you can watch at the same time. And I think that's what's really interesting about podcasts is there's tons of episodes there. You can watch them on your own time. And then additionally, uh, you know, you can do it, you can consume a podcast while driving or at the gym or anything like that. Whereas a video or, or an article, you actually have to stop and pay attention to it, um, a little bit more intensely. There's also an app called anchor.com, which is, you know, micro podcasts that are, you know, five minutes long, things like that. And it's essentially like Twitter as well. You can actually reply back with your voice. And I think that it's faster. I think that it creates a little bit more depth because it's essentially come full, full circle. We went from this way, this way of treating social media like a way to kind of promote the best part of parts of our lives and showcase that. But now people are still looking for a connection. And I think, uh, you know, something like anchor is really, you know, there's something about talking to somebody on the phone that really creates a deep connection or something like we're doing example, for example. And uh, I think anchor is on the way to do something uh, pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, when I used to work at a small company two years ago, roughly, it was a two hour commute, four hour round trip, roughly. And I used to listen to uh, Entrepreneur on Fire, you know, John Lee Dumas. Yeah, yeah. Back when it was on, like, episode 700-odd, something like that. Oh, I don't my know gosh. What I don't know what we're on now, but, yeah, back in the day. Uh, I used to listen to that a lot, and a few of the podcasts and all the rest, and it was, it was like, great chance to, while driving, learning. Nice little bit yeah. of leverage right there. Exactly. So, so I, I think the content on demand is always going to be on the rise. The thing that kind of worries me is that the supply... The supply of content and conversations and people online will grow, will forever grow upwards, and the demand might not grow as, will not grow as fast as that or as steep as that. So that, that's the thing that does concern me. That's why I believe yeah. you've got to make it very specific, very tailored, so the demand is totally tailored to to you, because you can create 
you can create content that gets a lot of views instantaneously, despite right. what the, despite what the demand is, because these people mm-hmm. follow you, these people that you know they subscribe to you. And that's, as a side note, that's also why I believe that SEO is dying, because mm-hmm. not as important, because because social media just allows you to get notifications on your phone when the latest YouTube video is up or things like that. And that you sure. can't beat that with SEO. It's just instantaneous. Forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that those are, you know, in regards to SEO and social media, I always look at SEO and search engine marketing as a way to be found, whereas social media is really a way to be discovered, right? Because when you're serving ads, it's based on interest as, a, as opposed to search criteria. So I think that's a, at least for anybody that might be in the marketing space for them to look at that as like, hey, if you want to come up under, you know, best chiropractor type of thing, that's the, uh, that's, you know, search engine optimization is where it's at. If you want to be discovered and not wait for people to search for you, then, you know, you use social media for that. Yeah, the way I say it is that um, you're in Orange County. If you yes. want to get from Orange County to Seattle, how are you going mm-hmm. to get there? You can walk, drive, get the train, <laughs> or get the plane. And yeah. focusing purely on SEO is like walking to Seattle. There's better, faster, easier ways to get to the journey than doing yeah. that, than just focusing purely on that. I That's agree. a really good point. Thank, yeah. you, thank you. And I agree purely it's just being found because when you can be discovered through search engine optimization and you know, Google search page one, for example, uh, that's essentially custom acquisition cost of zero. So essentially, no, it's a free free sale. I didn't cost mm-hmm. you anything to any marketing advertisement to get to, which is pretty right. cool. But my only caveat to that is I would want to focus on SEO with two other search engines one called DuckDuckGo, and the other one called Million Short. And whenever I want, to, when, I, when I'm searching for something, I will use Million Short because that shows results that Google overlooks or doesn't show you on page one. You can always find mm-hmm. some different results or something else that not everyone knows about on page one. But I would go from page one to ten on Million Short because there are things that Google might overlook or might think is not quite accurate or SEO isn't got to scratch. There's always something else that you can discover. I'd use it as a supplement alongside Google to uh, to do SEO for and when I'm searching for things. Interesting. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, a million short. And DuckDuckGo only recently rediscovered that, and it's like that's really just the same as Google, but it's not not tracked. But million short, so always often there are some different results, and those things could be useful or not useful. But uh, I'm also... I'm also very curious. You said that you started a marketing agency, uh, 712, which mm-hmm. is based on Matthew, the book of Matthew. So how does someone go about starting an agency? Is it as simple as getting some people together that are smart at marketing, getting things like Hootsuite, premium membership, and then able to schedule stuff out? And how does it go? Mm-hmm. How, do you work up? how does that happen? Yeah, and as far as starting an agency is concerned, I think the first thing that you have to do is understand what you're going to be providing to your client and making sure that you have the resources to actually execute on those. I am not a big believer in selling something that you can't provide. <laughs> as a matter of fact, uh, you should know everything about what you're selling before you decide to actually uh, create that transaction. So the first thing is make sure that you have the network. With me, like I actually did all the work myself in the beginning, and then it just kind of turned into an agency when the uh, when the workload was too much. After that, <clears throat> after that, it's really building great relationships with different uh, service providers or vendors. So whether it's a copywriter, graphic designer. Um, photographer, anything like that, you want to make sure that you have good relationships with them because the agents in your life is difficult. Clients are very demanding and you need to find people that you trust and you can work with um, and also understand your vision. So being able to uh, communicate your vision properly to these people that you may not have really done a lot of work with yet is also very important. And then over time, you know, you can, as the work comes in more and more, you can hire them on as full time and uh, you know, and, and then use them for other things like promoting your own company or things like that. But, uh, first things first, making sure that your network is all put together. With regards to getting your network and, uh, building a team, you mentioned trust and mm-hmm. making sure you get the good kind of people you want. What do you look for in the people when working in your agency? You know, that's interesting. I think for me, I'll, I'll be honest, I feel like I have a really good, uh, I think I have a really good sense for whether or not somebody's on the same page as I am. Uh, within the first two minutes of a conversation, I can 
typically tell whether or not I want to work with somebody and it's worked out pretty well so far. But outside of that, I like to hear about, you know, how they treat their clients. Um, I, I really, it, it's just a thing that I, I used to play poker for, uh, professionally for three years. So I got really in tune with people's, uh, uh, you know, whether it was their speech, their body language or anything like that. It's just kind of a, it's just kind of a sense thing for me to be honest, Adrian. Mm. I've heard that, um, you can learn a lot about someone when you sit down and have a drink with them. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that you can learn a lot about somebody when you sit down and have a drink with some, with them, you learn the most about somebody when they have everything in the world and you find out the true character of a person when it becomes between them and their money. All right. Yeah, definitely. Cause the uh, money amplifies the person that you currently are or the person you really are. Right. Yeah. So what is it you're working on next? Well, right now I'm, I'm just doing the same thing, working on the, uh, working on the agency, but, or, you know, building up a new team, making it bigger. I'm not a hundred percent which way I want to go with that, whether I want it to be a, like a scaled out agency or if it's like a lifestyle team type of thing. But I think that's something that I'm going to do for a very long time. I'm very, I'm very interested in marketing. I love the digital, uh, the digital, the digital space, especially with social media and producing content. So I think I'm always going to find a way to, you know, essentially make a living off of doing that and empowering the people around me as well to make a living doing that as well. Outside of that, I'm also very, I actually started my own podcast uh, called a day in the life. And, um, it's very similar to this where, you know, I'm just interviewing anybody in any walk of life, uh, trying to gain empathy for them. Right. So whether it's a marathon runner a single mom, uh, hopefully in the future, like, you know, somebody homeless or dealing with, you know, uh, terminal illness, that type of thing. I really want to dig into their heart and their mind and figure out, you know, what exactly, you know, what exactly makes them tick, what keeps them going and what are they struggling with so that the audience can really take a day. It goes back to the in initial mission of, you know, uh, empathy, um, really take a moment to see what it would be like in, in somebody else's shoes and understand how blessed we actually are. Yeah, I must get some more information about you and your podcast at the end of this, at the end of this podcast, in fact, because that sounds very Absolutely. curious. Yeah. And uh, I find that, I find that pot, doing podcasts are a good strategy when it comes to being discovered, actually, and found online. I had a podcast, I had a podcast a few years ago, two or so years ago, just, just, or just over two years ago, that was to do with the video game developers, the Daily Dev Talk, where I talk to people making video games all over the world, talk about their game, the strategy, the techniques, the software, the hardware, what kind of things they recommend or books they recommend. And I got to around 60 episodes in, and I essentially lost interest in the sector. And mm -hmm. about three weeks ago, I was on the fence, three and a half, four weeks ago, I was on the fence about uh, doing a podcast. And then I hear some a certain lesson that, that stated that by not having a podcast, you're leaving attention and discovery on the table. And I thought, that's it. From the, from the fence straight away, like, let's do it. And that was a Monday. And then by a Wednesday, I had episode one recorded and uploaded. Wow. I, 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 thank you. I had all the all the hardware, all the experience. Uh, except this time, did a much more lean, leaner, leaner approach. I didn't really go with um, uh, jumping on iTunes just yet. And I've, I'm now actually starting to be a victim of my own success right now, where I've got to, so many podcasts to record. Like, after this, I have three in a row to record, so <laughs> it's not very really ideal. So I must scale that down a little bit. So unfortunately, I was a victim of my own success, and it's like, great. Now that I've got good momentum going, I can just do two podcasts a day rather than four. And then, yeah. uh, that's much more manageable. Then I can focus on – I'm writing a book, so I can focus on a few other things right now. Um, I'm, I'm also, excited about that. That's cool. But also, I like – podcast because what I call the Oprah Winfrey effect and what psychologists call the halo effect. So what's Oprah Winfrey famous for? She's famous because she's famous. She had Tom Cruise and other people appearing on the show and their reputation, their history, their, their, li their likability-ness spills onto her. So if you do that a hundred times or a thousand times, interview people, people will know, like, and trust you quicker and sure. easier and it's not what you know it's not who you know it's who knows you so I like do, that. thank you do a thousand <clears throat> example, a thousand um podcasts a lot of people know who you are oh that's very good 
and the book is about content marketing actually yeah and, and inbound marketing and attention attention avalanche endlessly create content to engage engage um engage something and convert more customers so where did you hear about that i'm intrigued where, where did i hear about what uh, you, you when i when i mentioned my book you said you uh, you heard about it Oh no! I, I I said I was uh, very excited for that. Um, oh right, that's, yeah. that's that's even better. Cool. Um, but with oh, with regards to podcasts, though, earlier you mentioned Anchor dot com. Do you not mean Anchor FM? Uh, yeah, sorry, Anchor FM. Yeah, You're what right. is that exactly? Because I heard that's good for podcasts, but uh, I... yeah, it's like a, it's like Twitter for voice. So essentially, what you can do is create a station for yourself, similar to you know, similar to SoundCloud, but it's a lot smaller than that. Uh, what happens is you record, you can record five minute podcasts on it and then you put that, you know, little bit of content up and it stays on your station for 24 hours. Now you also have the, you also have the option to turn it into an episode. And if you turn it into an episode, Anchor will actually automatically put it onto different platforms like Google Play, iTunes and things like that and creates a pod, like an actual podcast channel for you as well. The other advantage of uh, anchor.fm is that um, you can also do interviews pretty seamlessly. Like you can essentially do a phone call and it, you know, it rings on the other person's line. It records it for you. It transcribes it for you and even creates a little video for you as well with all the, uh, with all the text in it. And I think that um, that feature is actually really cool. I don't use it to record my actual podcast though, because I, uh, you know, you can't really control the quality of the sound very much. And also when it does create that podcast channel for you, it, um, you know, it has like a bumper that says this podcast was created for free by anchor.fm. And I just didn't really want that for my personal brand. Mm. Yeah, because I want to get this podcast onto iTunes. But, mm -hmm. um, I just jumped straight into it onto YouTube and I thought, oh, then we'll figure it out later on. Yeah. Once I've slowed down a little bit, then I want well, then I want to look into iTunes again. I used to use Podbean, and okay. um, they were all right. And then I heard about Anchor FM on a few episodes ago. I, I really can't remember which one. And then I was thinking, oh, that, that sounds good. I just host these, host all these podcasts on there, and then it posts it to iTunes and elsewhere. And I thought that's really great. And that fifteen second thing, it's like, <laughs> uh, so I, I want to look into that. But is it, is it purely just for short form content, no long form? Um, for if you're doing a, if you're recording by yourself, it gives you five minutes to record. If you do an interview, it can be long form. I haven't gone past thirty minutes uh, on an interview on that, but you can do a thirty minute interview right. at least. Yeah. Well, I want to look into that, but um, but it depends. And speaking of content, I've recently started using Medium for writing up my blogs. What do you think to all these different social medias out there? Um, I think that there is a lot. I think that medium is definitely very important. I think anchor is getting a lot of attention as well. Um, I've noticed a decline in Snapchat for, because of like Instagram stories, but I think that Snapchat's still very important. Um, but they're not going to make their big move, uh, for a while. I think that Snapchat is more of a publication hub more than it is a, like a communication tool. Um, and a content push tool to be quite honest with you. But, uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm also active on medium. I love medium as a matter of fact, uh, still active on Twitter. And I think that's making, that's coming back up. Instagram is obviously where most people's attention is. And then I push a lot of content on Facebook as well. Yeah. My problem with Snapchat is that you have to follow someone already to start receiving the content, right. which is the reverse of like, everywhere else. Right. And my, my quarrel with Instagram lately is that, the churn rate is so high. My strategy was flawed in some way, but the churn rate is so high. It's just, I'll get 10 followers, great, and then I'll lose nine. I was like, why did you follow <laughs> me in the first place? Like, over the course of 24 hours. And it's like, why did you follow me in the first place? Yeah. So it's very jaggered. It's just my strategy. I'm, I, I, think, I'm, I think I'm just creating content that people uh, don't really care about. Or that's, that's a fair assessment. Yeah, that's or, a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, or, or, or the, the people who uh, people who consume that kind of content are very fickle or something like that. But it, either way, it's me. I'm doing something wrong. 
but <laughs> but I, I'm I think I'm I'm phasing it back kind of, and I'm focusing more on YouTube purely, like number one, sure. and also another platform very similar to Reddit mm-hmm. called Steam It, which is just posting content on there, and the community around three hundred thousand people, different categories and different tags, find it and consume it. And I like it because it's a very it's a, it's a about a year old and it's very similar to Reddit but much less saturated and that's I think early mover advantage is quite good quite good and quite cool. I agree with you. Um, as far as you know, Instagram growth is concerned. I mean, it sounds like you you were probably on Twitter back in like oh eight oh nine oh seven. Oh yeah, I was. I think I joined Twitter in oh eight or oh nine. My, yeah. my quarrel with that platform as well is um, is the user base is like 300 million, so it's not really not too big. But the interesting thing is like newspapers, news mm-hmm. agencies, they always quote the Twitter. And they, right. they often often quote a picture on Instagram or quote something on, on Facebook. So it's like the world communicates with Twitter and it's like such and such said this or people did that or sure. so and so said this said this silly thing or whatever or this this tweet by whoever did these things here and there and it's like and it's like that's the place to be but I've heard that unless you're somebody you're not really going to be found too easily on there but yeah also, but also I've heard or I felt that um you post something more often than not, it, it just disappears into the dark corners of the internet and dark corners yeah. of Twitter. And it's like, unless someone purposely searches for a hashtag or right. certain keywords, they're not going to find it. Yeah, those, it definitely those are my became, main two quarrels with it. Yeah, it definitely became oversaturated and people are very much using it as a content push platform and not really engaging in conversation like they used to back in 08, 09. It used to be more of a conversational tool. The... Um, the comparison I wanted to make is the growth patterns on Twitter are very, or on Instagram are very similar to what it was like on Twitter back in 08, 09, because that same pattern of auto like, auto follow, da da da, was happening on Twitter to amass to followings on Twitter. And that same pattern ended up happening to uh, Instagram, right? So, and it's happening right now, I think, and that's kind of what you're dealing with is like people are unfollowing, unfollowing following or unfollowing just to gain an audience and just like a quick type of thing. Um, but it's not very personal at all. It's, it's mainly for like for numbers sake. And I, that's exactly what happened with Twitter. Yeah. That follow for follow strategy always been bad. Never, never liked that. Never, never liked that. It's, 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 it's very empty. There's no real connection. There's no real emotion there. Correct. Mm. But, uh, as we begin to wrap this up then, Remind the audience then, what is it working on now? What's the next big project for you? The next big project, I would say, is definitely the podcast. I'm very excited about that. Um, obviously, uh, you know, starting a new agency is very exciting for me, but I kind of have that unlocked, to be quite honest, and we're managing, uh, you know, we're managing great clients, and we have a great team that's doing that. We're obviously still trying to grow, grow that, but the one thing that I'm very, very passionate about is the podcast, and only because... I just love connecting with people just like we're able to do right now in a way that, you know, just isn't possible in very, in it wasn't possible, you know, in any other time in our life than now to just like, we video chatted. Where are you based anyway? Wolverhampton in England. Okay. So there is like zero chance I would have ever ran into you like five years ago. Right. And so, and then able to have this conversation. So this is really exciting for me. Um, and it's something that I definitely want to grow. Yeah, um, with regards to your podcast, you say empathy. What what is so special about empathy? Just purely connecting with people, so you you can see the world from their point of view. But what what's your big bias towards it? My big bias is this: like empathy, being able to at least master or at least have a sense of empathy is advantageous because it allows you to. It sounds, you know, it's going to be, be kind of deep, but it allows you to to forgive more easily, to be happy for other people more easily. And I think that those are two things that are very important just in our culture. Um, and I mean, I don't know how it is over in England. I'm sure you've heard a lot of uh, things that are going on in the States, um, just uh, the massive amount of separation that's going on between different, you know, religions, between different cultures, things like that in a world where we were all really created equal to a certain extent. And by like for us, like Muslim, and I'm not a political person, so it's not something I really want to get into, but as a homosexual Muslim American, 
the amount of like judgment and prosecution that you can run into in our, in, you know, in our society right now is insane. But if people took a moment to understand that, look, a certain religion doesn't necessarily define the type of person that they are, who they decide to sleep with or who they're attracted to doesn't, doesn't define the type of person that they are. If we took a moment to understand like what that person might be going through, we would probably have a lot less judgment. Additionally, in like a business aspect as well, having a massive amount of amount of empathy will help you. It can help you market better because you're you're more in tune with what does a certain audience want and what kind of content can I deliver them uh, so that you know m- my go my content will be more uh, effective in a sales setting. Like if you're if you're able to sit there and look at your prospect and be like, I know what you need. Um, I'm listening to your pain points and I empathize with you, you're able to deliver a better service to that prospect as well because you actually know what they want as opposed to just trying to sell them some stuff, right? So practicing empathy is very important um, just to get along in daily life, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. Yeah, I think every now and then people think, people think why we all, it, people get along in general, so why everyone else get along in general? What's, what's the main thing holding people back but that's a that's a big big question for, for for another time probably and yeah with empathy i think also it, it helps to foster seeing through people's eyes as well and uh share the story there as well we all love stories yeah absolutely i completely agree with you yeah we, but after this we must talk about i'm very curious getting onto that show would that be okay sometime yeah i would love that actually yeah we'll, we'll discuss that at the end so no worries um, but speaking of the end, uh, what is the best way for the audience to get in touch with you? Um, Instagram, Snapchat, or Twitter. They can find me on all three platforms. My handle is Mick, M-I-Q-K. The Q comes before the K. Um, but yeah, DM me, comment. I'll uh, I'm always on there. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll add those links in in the description below. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? But Mikhail, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. Yeah, thanks a lot. And ladies and gentlemen at home, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button below, if you're on YouTube, of course, click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification right next to it for the latest uploads. And if you're watching this on Steam It, give it up, give it an upvote and uh, follow me as well. Because either way, there is plenty more content to come and plenty more podcasts. Because this channel is all about helping you Become a remarkable entrepreneur. So go out there today and do something remarkable. How cool is that? Very cool.